Hello and welcome to Social Media Ministries. My name is Spencer Kaufman. Thank you for tuning in today. If this is your first time, welcome. Uh, check out our channel. You can see our trailer. I'll read the description below and find out what we're really about. I'm so happy you're here with us. If you're a returning visitor, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the like button on this video right away because I know you're going to like the sermon. If not, well, uh, that's okay too because we are really uh, working hard to complete and fulfill our mission, which is spreading the living word of Christ to as many people as possible through the use of social media and also helping them understand and interpret the scriptures in the Bible. So help us fulfill that mission uh, by using the share icons below. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, all of that. And if you want to contribute financially, we do need some financial support as well, although it is very minimal. We have low overhead uh, thanks to some uh, use of other people's studios, etc. But we're not going to get into that. That's okay. Uh, continuing on, we have a great message for you today. Uh, it is a continuation from our message last week. So if you haven't yet watched or listened to that, uh, please check it out in a card up above here. If you're watching on YouTube, you can simply click on it and you'll be directed to last week's sermon. Now, if you're somewhere else, uh, check it out. You'll be able to find it on our channel or just scroll up in your, in your podcast and you can listen to last week's message prior to this one. But if you listen to them out of order, it is okay. So today we are talking about how you are much more valuable than birds. What in the world does that mean? Well, uh, if you listened to last week, you kind of have an idea. If not, keep listening or listen to that one. Doesn't matter, but listen to both of the messages because you are much more valuable than a bird. All right, let's dive in. We're going to start out in Matthew 6, 26. If you have your Bible, open it up because it's very, very important that you follow along with me and read because it's through multiple forms of using more senses. So if you're watching, that's good. That's one. If you're listening, that's two. If you're reading, uh, that's that's really three because you're touching. And so the only other thing you could do would be like to taste it, but you're also smelling the atmosphere, everything. So use more of your senses and you'll help encode more data. We want to internalize the scriptures. So if you don't have your Bible, come back later. Verses will be referenced in the description below. Here we go. Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet... <clears throat> Your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Answer the question. Are you more valuable than birds? Do you need to think about it? Hopefully the answer is yes. Very, very quickly. You are much more valuable than birds. In fact, you are part of the most valuable species in the eyes of God. Why is this? Well, Christ died for you. For those of you who maybe don't know what I'm talking about, if you're not a believer, uh, Christ, Jesus Christ, came to the world. He died to save you. He took the punishment for your sins, and that means you can go into heaven. He died for you. He paid your debt. He paid your sacrifice in full. You don't need to worry about anything because you need to trust in him. When you die and go there and they say, why should we let you into heaven? You don't say, well, I was a good person. I, I fed this many people. I volunteered this many hours. I donated this much money. They say, so what? So what? Even pagans do that. Your answer needs to be, I believe in Jesus Christ and trusted him as my Lord, as my Savior, he died for me and paid my price so I can come in. Come on in. If you have any other questions about that, comment below. Send us a message on Instagram, whatever. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Christ died for you. Not for dogs, cats, any other animal, but for you. He died for you. You are the most valuable species. You're better than birds. Matthew chapter 10, 29 to 31. Check it out. 10, 29 to 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? 
yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And yet even the very hairs on your head are numbered. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Many sparrows. You're worth more than many sparrows. There's the proof. If you weren't sure in the beginning, maybe you're having a tough time in life. Maybe you're sad, you're depressed, you struggle with anxiety or major depressive disorder or something like that, and you feel worthless. Right here. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Why are you depressed? Why do you feel worthless? That's the enemy coming in and spreading lies in your life. Don't listen to them. Listen to this. This is Jesus' word. Look at here. This is red. That means that this is Jesus speaking. Now, if you have one of the Bibles that does that, it's very cool. I recommend it. It really helps to decide, or not to decide, but to understand what Jesus said. And these are his words. You are worth more than many sparrows. Jesus is the Son of God. He has the most authority of anyone here on earth. Had. Uh, he's still here. He's alive. He's telling you, you are worth more than many sparrows. So if there's some other voice telling you that you're worthless, whether it's another person, whether it's something inside your head, those are lies. Don't listen to them. You are worth more than many sparrows. You are worth a lot. You are the most valuable species. Take a look outside. Look out your window. Watch the birds for a day, for an hour. Look at them. They fly around. They land from tree to tree. They're singing. Maybe they're chasing each other. Every once in a while, they'll find a puddle and splash in it. They uh, pick up seeds from the ground. If you've got a bird feeder, they're out there eating the food. That what? They didn't scrounge for you provided it for them they're they're not starving have you ever seen a little skinny twig like bird with the stomach sucked in and all the bones that you could see maybe a dead one but not one flying around do they all have a home do you see birds nests out there where they're living yeah they're not starving they've got a home do they look like they're ill ill clothed no they've got nice feathers good colors, they all have food. They build their nests. Even big birds like hawks, eagles, all of these, they find food eventually. Owls, they, you may watch one sitting in a tree and it's sitting there, hours, looking down at the ground until finally a little mouse comes out or a chipmunk or a snake. There goes the bird and it has its meal. Now. What did it do? It sat there, it worked, it patiently waited, it trusted that eventually there will be some food out there for me. It didn't sit there and worry, oh man, I hope a mouse comes out, I'm hungry. No, it sat there patiently, diligently waiting for the food to be provided to it by nature. They don't have advanced cognitive thought like we do, so it doesn't trust in God to provide. But we know that's what we're supposed to do. The birds, they just trust. They just know it. It's intuitive to them. It's in their nature. Why isn't it in our nature? Well, it is in our nature. We simply allow the world to distract our nature of trusting and being reliant. Think of kids. In the Bible, Jesus says, you must humble yourself like a child in order to get into heaven. Why? Because children rely on their parents for everything, especially the younger they are. Babies, they, they can't do anything. They don't do anything for themselves. As you get older, you start to do more and more for yourself and you become independent. And then we start to get distracted. We start to get proud and we think, I can do it. I can do everything. I'm just fine. I don't need anybody else. I can do my own laundry, I can make my own money, I can buy my own food, clothing, housing, everything. I can do it all by myself. Wrong. You need God. You need Jesus. Your heavenly father. This is like your earthly father maybe cared for you when you were a baby or your parents or someone did, whether it's a, a family, friend, relative. When you were an infant, Growing up, you relied on others. As an adult, 
you need to shift and rely on God. Birds find food eventually. God provides everything for the birds because they allow him to do so. Now, they're not sitting there thinking, all right, God, uh, please provide me a bird or a, a squirrel or a chipmunk uh, that I can go and grab out of the air or off the ground and eat today. They're not going through that. They're just doing. Don't think, just do. That's what they're doing. That's what you should do in your life. Trust God will provide you if you allow him to do so. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs is an excellent book written by one of the wisest men or the wisest man other than Jesus, the wisest man that ever walked the earth. Let's go there. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I don't need anybody. I can do it. I'm more independent now. I grew up. I'm on my own. That's your own understanding. Don't do that. God gave you all of those skills to be independent. Physically, not spiritually. Spiritually, you need to rely on him and trust and know in your heart that the reason you can do all that on your own is because God enabled you to learn. He gave you that ability to be able to do everything here on your own, but you still need him to give you more. Why would he give you more? Because you're being a good steward of the things he has already given you. So, back to birds. They work. They're diligent when building their nests, gathering their food, or patient when sitting there watching, waiting for their prey to come out so they can eat. They all have to use the same qualities God wants you to use. Patience, persistence, diligent, willing to work. Proverbs 10, 4, great verse. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. What does that mean? Well, if you're lazy, if you're not doing anything, you just want handouts, you want free money, you want people to do everything for you, you might get some good government handouts in the short term but you're going to be poor. Why? Because you're not learning any skills to go out there and make money. The most valuable thing you can do is to continue to learn better yourself. God gave you a mind. Use it. God gave you hands. Use them. God gave you a, an able body, hopefully. If he didn't give you an able body, he gave you something. You may be a quadriplegic, but maybe you can speak. You have a brain. If you're totally in a coma laying there, well, then the only thing you could do is be happy. Be a good example for others. By even in your predicament, you're still praising God. I know it's hard, and you might say, well, you're up there, you're standing, you're speaking, you look able-bodied. Easy for you to say, that's a different conversation. Something in your heart, you know this is true. That it is your job to use what God has given you, whatever it is, however great or however small, continue praising him. All these birds, animals, they have to use the same qualities. They don't have that advanced cognitive thought. They don't let things of the world distract them. They just do. Be diligent and willing to work, and God will provide you everything you need. Let's go back to Matthew. It's a, a chapter 7, verse 9. So if you have your Bible, turn with me. If not, remember, they'll be in the description below. I highly encourage you to come back later, read them, even talk about them with a friend, because I'm only reading you a few verses at a time, but there are some before and after to help you get the context. Really start up a discussion, begin to internalize it, and then externalize it with others. Matthew 7, 9 to 11. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What does this mean? We are evil. We're not pure. We're not holy. We can be holy by inviting Jesus to live in us and being more like him. 
That's it. Otherwise, we're evil. We're childs of the devil, children of the devil, children of this world ruled by the devil. Evil. We have to learn to be good. Children have to be taught to be good. They naturally do bad things. They naturally get into stuff they're not supposed to do. We're naturally, inherently bad. We need to learn to be good. And it's only through Jesus that we can be saved. If even though we are not perfect and we give good gifts to our children or to others because we love them, how much more will our Father in heaven give good gifts to us because he loves us and he is perfect and good and holy? You say, well, yeah, but in my life, I don't have good gifts. My car is breaking down. My this is bad. Everything is, is broken. I'm in debt. I can hardly pay my bills. I'm working three jobs. I may not be able to even get a job. That's on you. You may have made some bad choices. You may have gotten yourself into some bad situations. Whatever you have done in your life, wherever you are, is a result of that. You say, no, it's not my fault. Hey, take responsibility. It's your life. Trust God. Work hard. Be diligent. Be patient. Be prosperous. And you will get out of whatever hole you're in. You can do it. It's not something that will happen instantly. You say, well, I don't have good things. God's not giving me the gifts that I, have, that I need, that I want. Hey, he's given you the ability to get that. Do it. Start doing. Work hard. Be diligent. Like the birds. Be patient. They don't labor or toil or spin, but you know what they do? Every day they're out there looking for their worm that God's going to provide. Finding the piece of string to hold their nest together. Caring for their young. They're out working every single day. Now, does that mean you need to go out there and work hard, do manual labor? No. It means you need to use what God has given you. So if God has given you a little thing, maybe you do have a beater car. Use the car. Be thankful for the car. Take care of it. Be a good steward of what God has given you, and you will be blessed with more. Remember the parable of the talents? It's a great parable. We're not going to get into it. It's a lesson for another time. But basically, a uh, master gives stuff to three people. And when he comes back years later, maybe a year later, he says, all right, give me a report. Wow, you've done really well with what I gave you. You take really good care of your things. Uh, you did really good. Well done. Here's more. You, okay, great, good job. You, what happened? I didn't do anything with what you gave me. You didn't? Nope, here's what you gave me. Well, what in the world? You could have at least done something. Take it away. Get out of here. Give what I gave you to the one who did the best with it. That's your goal. You're better than birds. Look at what birds do. They're patient. They're diligent. They work hard. You're better than that. Be better. Allow God to give you more than he gives the birds. He gives the birds all the stuff they need. So you have the ability to get what you need from God and more. He wants to abundantly bless you. Stop worrying about it. You're better than birds. Not one bird falls to the ground without your father knowing. Therefore, he's not going to let you go out and suffer. Trust in him. Fully rely on God. You are better than birds. It's a broken record. I know. But it's the truth. You need to hear it. It's so important. Rely on God in everything you do. Use the qualities and the skills he gave you and you will be abundantly blessed and provided for. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for each and every one of these people who are uh, dedicating their time to listen and learn more about you. I ask that you would touch their hearts and their minds and help them uh, shut out the enemy's lies that tells them every day that they're worthless or that they aren't good enough. Fill them with joy and with the, uh, the truth that they are worth so much more than any other animal, any other thing in this world, that they are so much more valuable, that uh, they were created specifically for you and that everything here was created for them. And Lord, give them the knowledge and the wisdom 
to use what you have given them uh, correctly and to be a good steward of it all and to trust you and not worry or doubt that they would have faith and that they would use it properly and that you would give them more because you know that they can handle it, that they are a good steward of what you gave them and help them to not be distracted by the things in this world but to continue to focus on your kingdom and your righteousness, and all of this will be given to them as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you so much for tuning in today. Please check out the other sermons, the other messages. Talk about them with your friends, family. Share them. You can watch previous ones all online. They're archived. You can listen to them from way back. Go through them. Share them with your friends, family internalize them, and then begin to externalize them with others. Help us complete our mission of reaching more people through social media by sharing with those icons below and help you achieve your calling of bringing more people to Christ. God bless.